well and congratulations on your new GHO home. My name is Janine. I am one of the customer service representative. This video is going to talk about the orientation on your home. So since you guys closed your new home, you are going to receive an orientation package that looks just like this. It's going to be two folders. So you're going to have all your important documents in regards to warranty all in here. And then you are going to receive a Sean Williams welcome folder like this. Inside this folder, you are going to receive a voucher that you can take it to your local Sean Williams store and collect one free gallon of paint of your choice, either interior or exterior. So we're going to talk about your kitchen. Inside your kitchen, you have some pretty great appliances. You either have Whirlpool or GE. Again, I highly recommend that you refer back to your orientation package. Inside the orientation package, you are going to have the information that you need in regards to GE information as well as Whirlpool information. So we're going to move into the garbage disposal. I'm going to show you how you can operate it as well as how to troubleshoot it if you have any issues. You want to make sure you don't stick your hands inside the garbage disposal. Please make sure you use either a retrieving device such as a tong or a needle nose plier if you have one. So with your home, you do have an air switch. If for whatever reason at any time, if you're having any particles or food debris being stuck inside a garbage disposal, you want to make sure you grab your Allen key, open the bottom of your cabinet and your vanity sink, and go ahead and put the device in there and just turn it. There's also a little red button that you can go ahead to reset the garbage disposal if that doesn't work for you. But before we do that, we want to make sure we unplug the disposal first. Mm -hmm. Turn. Nice. Hit the red button, the reset button. Hold it for three seconds and release. When it comes to your appliances in your kitchen, you do want to report to the manufacturer directly if you have any warranty issues with your appliance. Again, you may have either Whirlpool or GE, and we're going to show you where you can find the serial number as well as the model number for your appliance. You want to make sure that you are able to locate the model number as well as the serial number in your appliance. A lot of times when it comes to your kitchen appliances, when you open the door, you will see the appliance sticker right there. So just give me an example, dishwasher machine, your sticker will be on the side. To locate your serial number and your model number on your refrigerator, it's simply inside. So open your door and it will be on your right hand side of your refrigerator. So if you have a freestanding range stove, you will find your serial number as well as your model number. When you open the oven door, it will be right there in the side. But if you have a cooktop such as this, you do have to open your cabinet drawer to gain access to it and the sticker will be underneath it. So what we're going to talk about now is the shutter valve for your appliances, okay? So in case of an emergency, if your dishwasher machine is leaking or if your refrigerator starts to leak for whatever reason, there are ways that you can shut it off without having to shut off the main water supply for your home. And we're going to show you right now how you can do that. So for the dishwasher machine, there is simply a little shut off valve underneath the vanity. I am going to show you in a bit how you can shut that off. For your refrigerator, the refrigerator is pretty fairly light, so you can actually pull this one away just by using two fingers to be honest. Pull it away. There's a little valve right behind there. Just shut it off and that will fix all your issues until we go back in service. We're going to go over your kitchen cabinet. Now we do recommend to use mild dish soap and water when it comes to cleaning these guys. But when it comes to using your oven with the self-cleaning feature, you do want to make sure that you open the cabinets surrounding it such as the top cabinets as well as the bottom drawers to allow the heat to vent out. When it comes to your countertop, you want to make sure that you refer to the proper manual in your orientation package. A lot of times, the majority of all countertops, you want to make sure that you use only mild dish soap and water to wipe down your countertop. You don't want to use anything acidic on it that can defect the soap. So your breaker box is going to be located in your garage which can have different components. So you're talking about your overload, you're talking about your arc fault, which is gonna protect you from fire, and then your GFCI, which is gonna protect you from shock and electrocution. GFCI outlets are an electrical feature in your home that is going to prevent you from getting shocked or electrocuted. 
GFCIs can vary throughout your house. You may find them in your kitchen, your laundry room, your bathrooms, and your exterior as well as in your garage. So the GFCI outlets, they're going to be located in various areas in your home. They can be located in your kitchen, your bathroom, your laundry room, your garage, and even your exterior. One of the features when it comes to the GFCI, to give you an example, this GFCI is located in a master bathroom. Now some of them may control the other bathroom as well. So if the power goes out in here, you can simply go to the panel right here and hit the reset button by simply just pushing it up. So your exterior outlets are gonna have a waterproof cover on it. This one actually has a GFI um, inside, so you just wanna simply lift this up and reset the GFCI if any of your electrical outlets go out. So a trip breaker is gonna have a red indicator. You simply wanna make sure that when this happens, the switch is gonna be in the center. So all you have to do is just go into off position and then push it back on on. And that's it, that's how you can reset your breaker. So all the general areas in your home will be located on the panel. So if you have any issues as far as what room you should be resetting, maybe you're not really sure which breakers to hit, you simply just wanna go by the panel, look at the numbers, follow the sign, and just switch it over. In every GHO home, you do have the Nest thermostat. You wanna make sure you refer to the manual and make sure that you register this guy online. You can do that by going to nest.com. So let's go ahead and talk about your Nest thermostat. I'm just gonna show you how to do the basic accessory for your thermostat here. So just keep in mind, these guys are very sensitive to touch. So if you wanna go ahead to the main menu, you can just simply push. If you wanna change the temperature in your home, you can just simply turn the knob left to right. If you wanna to get to the main menu, go ahead and push the device and you'll come to the main menu right here. You will have different icons, every icon is different. So you have your cool mode and your heat mode right here, your eco, your fan, as well as your scheduling, history, and your setting. Again, I do advise for you to go ahead onto nest.com and just basically go by the manual based on the manufacturer. So if you need any more questions in regards to your Nest thermostat, simply go to nest.com. Back from now, and we're gonna talk about some of the plumbing features that you may have in your home, okay? So in case of an emergency, let's say if you're noticing that your sink is leaking at the bottom, there is a shut off valve underneath it. They can go ahead and just turn the handle and it will shut off itself. Same thing with the toilets. If you notice that your toilets are leaking, you can go behind the water tank underneath at the bottom and you can shut off the valve as well from there. So we're gonna talk about GFIs in your bathroom. Now, every single home is different, but if you have a GFI buttons in your home, if for whatever reason you're blow drying your hair and all of a sudden it just shuts off the power, just simply go ahead and reset the button right here. However, if you don't have this feature in your home, you can go definitely go to your breaker box in your garage, go where it says bathroom, and just hit the reset button and you should be good to go. So when you're in your laundry room right now and we want to talk about in case of emergency if you have any leakage going on for your washing machine. To shut off your water valve for your washing machine, you want to push your handle forward to turn it on, push it back. We do recommend for you to flush out your water heater. However, in order to do that, you want to make sure that you go by your operational manual on your water heater. Your main shut off valve for your house for the water will look similar as this handle right here. If it's facing down, the water is on. If it's sideways, the water is off. So upon closing, you should have received a closing package with a GHO goodie bag. Inside a bag, you should have received the LiftMaster manual for your garage door opener. You can also go ahead and download the app. Your house is equipped with a hurricane brace. I am going to show you how you can install this during hurricane season, especially here in the state of Florida. So to begin with, you want to make sure that you unlock your garage by simply pulling on the red handle. It's going to make a little pop noise. And then sometimes you do have to remove, there is a latch at the very top where the black handle hits and you want to remove that pin in order for you to slide your hurricane brace. 
Your hurricane brace is going to be located on the side of your garage. It will be most likely on the left. Sometimes they are located on the right. However, they will always be on the side. So you can simply just pick this up. It is a lot lighter than what it seems. Simply lift it up and remove it off. Before you go ahead and install your hurricane brace, you want to make sure you remove the red cap off your garage floor. You can simply do this by using a flat tool and just pop it right off. However, if you're going to paint your garage floor, we highly recommend that you do not paint over this. It will be very difficult for you in the long run to pop these bad boys off. So, so you want to make sure that your hurricane brace is engaged and locked in on the top and at the bottom. And then you're going to get these little scratches right here that you see that is loose. Pull the pin, level it up, run the pin right through, and that's all there is to it. Once you get that first pin in, you want to make sure that you check from top to bottom and make sure all those pins are safely secured. Your garage is going to come equipped with this an extra lock right here. You are going to have one on each side, so you can simply just slide it over for a little bit extra protection. Right. After you use your hurricane brace, make sure your garage door is latched again with your garage door opener. Simply just push the button and allow your garage door to re-engage. So when you're done with your hurricane brace, just simply hang it back up where you found it, slide underneath the bracket, and make sure the pins are not hitting the tracks. And that's it. So to give you an example about cement cracks, we're just going to use a garage floor as one. So if you have a cement crack on the garage floor that is less than 3 16th of an inch, that is considered to be normal. So sediment cracks in your home, they are the natural process of your home expanding and contrasting as well. So things such as your drywall, your grout, all your woodwork in your house, such as the baseboard and door casings, all that does tend to shrink and expand over time. So this is considered homeowner's maintenance, but if you have any further questions in regards to this, please refer back to your manual in your orientation package. If not, you can always give us a call and we'll be happy to further assist you. So your air conditioning unit may be located inside your home or it can be on the exterior side of your home. Either way, you wanna make sure that you change your filter on a monthly basis. Now to change your filter based on your unit, you wanna go ahead to the bottom. There's two little handle latches. Just simply pop them out, slide that filter out, clean it or replace it. Now I do recommend that for you to go ahead and maintain your unit at least twice a year. In this segment we're going to talk about drainage on your lot. Your lot was designed by an engineer and it was approved by your local government. So your lot is designed for having water to move away from your house to the drainage point and it's going to exit either forward or even some cases back to the storm's drainage system. Furthermore your contour and your swells can be holding water for a long extended period of time. When it comes to dry season, you want to make sure that you adjust your irrigation system by simply going to your rainbird box and go ahead and adjust the sprinkler system as needed. If you need any help, you can simply just look at the manual on your left hand side. Landscaping is considered to be homeowner's maintenance. However, when it comes to your lawn, some community, depending on your association, will do lawn maintenance for you. However, please check back with your HOA just to make sure. Sometimes too much of a good thing is not always good. So you want to make sure that you don't overwater your lawn. Please check your irrigation system and refer to the proper guidelines as to how much you should be watering your lawn as well as your landscaping, depending on the season. Any modifications done to your lot, such as gutter downspouts, fences, or modification to your landscaping can affect your grading. Prior to your orientation, if you're noticing any dead sod, dead plants, or even dead trees, you want to make sure you bring it to your representative's attention. If you're wondering what these little green pods are throughout your property, that is for termite treatment. Not every house have these, but if you are equipped with them, you want to make sure you activate your warranty. For more further information, you can find that in your orientation package. So the pavers in your house on the driveway as well as in the patio will require homeowner's maintenance. We do recommend that you go ahead and pressure wash them as needed. You are going to have some mineral deposits being developed on the driveway, normally towards the end and the edges. Um, but we do recommend again, just treat it as needed. 
We do also highly recommend for homeowners not to be driving their vehicles on the edge of the pavers. This could cause the pavers to actually sink. So on your windows, there is a little bit of a trick to it to open it and close it. So just simply unlatch it, open it. Now when it comes to closing, you want to make sure you press all the way down. Shift your weight a little bit on one side, lock it. Shift your weight on the other side and lock it. Now when it comes to the screens, there are two little black tabs on the outside part of the screen. So you just simply put your finger underneath it, lift it, and pull out.